Well, hello, people of Defend the House, and welcome back to another one of mine and Jameson's long talky review podcast video thangs. Today, we are covering the month of March. There was yeah, quite March. a lot in March. We're going to review the games in this order Sea of Thieves, Far Cry 5, and A Way Out, which was release order, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think you might be right, actually. Uh, a Way Out might have. Co- I don't know. A way I might have come a week before Far Cry, but... Yeah, I can't remember, but that's the way that we played them. Yeah. That's how our memory and our opinions are lined up in the brains, so that's how we're gonna lay this out. And this Mm -hmm. should be an interesting chat. Sea of Thieves has, for some reason, become a controversial title. Far Cry Mm -hmm. 5 has some interesting talking points, and a way out's a weird thing. So I'm looking forward to getting into these three games. But let's kick it off. With Sea of Thieves, the open world pirate simulation esque sandbox game from Rare. Remember Rare? No. <laughs> yeah. Are those the guys that make the Bad Connect games? Yes, and oh. also the great Banjo Kazooie games. <sighs> God, this is their first game since Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts that wasn't a Bad Connect game, and that just yeah. makes me so sad because that was 10 years ago. Mm hmm. Sea so of Thieves. See... You want to go first? I don't know. What is... Uh, I, don't, I don't know where to begin with Sea of Thieves. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I think there's two main talking points. I think we should start by just talking about what's in the game and what we think about what's in the game before we inevitably talk about the content situation and what people are all talking about and... Sure. Somehow getting angry about because well, I have I think to be fairly getting angry about. Yeah, so let's let's yeah. start off in a positive light. Okay. I think Sea of Thieves looks very nice. Jesus Murphy, <laughs> <laughs> it does. It is. Yeah, that's maybe my favorite part of the game. Which yes. Is weird to say, but like, it just looks so nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, not just the water. Like, the, I like the character designs. I like all the the plants. And the f- trees and the, the colors, ship, the colors, it's just it's vibrant. It's just so bright and so colorful and so pleasant and nice mm-hmm. to look at all the time. It's yeah. one of the best looking games I've ever seen just because it's so nice. It's just mm-hmm. maybe not doing a lot of crazy technical stuff. I don't know. But boy, it just makes me happy to look at. Yes. Uh, it just feels good to be in it. Yeah. Personality in the visuals and personality throughout that game in a way that I really enjoy. Uh, yeah, me too. We played the alpha. Mm-hmm. Um, I got into the alpha like last summer and played some of that last summer. And then we played it again in December. And then we did the open beta or the closed beta in February or wherever, whenever it was. And then the game came out. And so I would say we have a bit of a... I don't know. We, I think, sort of knew what Sea of Thieves was going into it, which yeah helped a lot. I would say, uh, which, you know, we'll get to the other. We'll, as you said, we'll get into that later. But what's there is sort of what was there when I played it last year, <laughs> or or not. <laughs> it's more like what's good was it's what's good now is what was good about it in February and December and last summer. Uh, which is this weird, goofy, sort of surprisingly simple and effective sandbox for shenanigans with your friends and other random people. Yeah. Uh, which we should say, I, I think, well, see, yeah, see if this is a weird fucking game to review <laughs> because, like, if I was looking at it in a lot of traditional senses, I would look at it and be like, this game, this is what? This is, what? there's like, nothing here basically uh yeah. and it's a full price and so like in a lot of weird traditional ways um you would look at it and criticize it rightly but i think like the strongest part of it is extremely strong and that is the weird emergent stuff that can happen when you're playing with your friends and yeah it's the scenarios that can unfold with the sandbox yeah and the sandbox is as i said pretty basic um yeah. but it's effective and the moments of being with three other people on your ship 
and having weird encounters with other players uh, have been fantastic. And borderline magic, some of the yes. moments I've had in this game, yeah. I would agree, yeah. And uh, I would say not exactly ha played like a ton of it as a group, you know, with four of us. It's yeah, only been 15 a hours or something. Yeah, like at most, maybe. It's been like only four sessions, maybe five. Hmm. And uh, every one of them has a moment or two or three. Every, every one of those sessions, we've come out of it with a good story. Uh, yeah. And, you know, we might say more negative things later on, but like the strength of those moments is so positive for me. Oh, yeah. Um, Huge. You know, we were doing myths myth recording and we encountered king clutch legend of the seas <laughs> and he helped us and it was amazing and i fight you know when we sailed off i was like i'm going to give this guy a four gun cannon salute as a thank you and he played his music and swam away and it was beautiful and i'll remember it forever and yes there have been lots of stuff like that where it's just just weird fun things happening between players um and it's one of those games where it's like if you played it solo you might have that experience maybe mm -hmm. if you played with a group of friends you're much more likely to have it but i think it is still theoretically possible for you to not have any good moments you know you could play for two hours yeah. and never encounter another ship we um, were we were live streaming this game and we had a bunch <laughs> of people drift in uh, and we're talking about it and a lot of people who had tried it solo were not having any fun and we're getting locked in the brig yeah. instantly by a group of like three other people. And it's hard not to transition into the content thing because everything's kind of connected to it. But I think there's been a new line of multiplayer games which really um, make room for player stories. The Battle Royale genre. We've seen kind of weird PvE mixed with PvP games just like Sea of Thieves with The Hunt. And Escape from Tarkov, and I really like this innovation in multiplayer and people trying different things except for like a deathmatch. But a lot of those other games, PUBG, Fortnite, The Hunt, you don't have to interact with other players or have one of those stories to get something out of it. Where with Sea of Thieves, I think the story moments are the best out of any multiplayer game I've ever played. And I played pretty much all those games. I haven't tried Escape from Tarkov, but I've been there for the cool PUBG stories. Me and Ben have had some cool times in the hunt, and Sea of Thieves wipes the floor with those games when it comes to the shenanigans and the laughs. I'll never forget the time that me and Ben fought the Kraken, and I, <laughs> I thought I lost Pepe the Chicken, and then we found him, and he was executed, and it was an emotional roller coaster. But I can see people out there paying $60 mm -hmm. for this game, a full price, getting home, turning it on and getting locked in the brig two matches in the row and thinking, like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. They or... created, they created sure, yeah. a very delicate system where if everything falls into place, you yeah. can have an absolute blast. But I don't think a game should ever have the chance of that not happening if you're going to base your game around those moments. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, there shouldn't I, be a I chance for a player you. to not have those moments. And it seems like a lot of people are not having any of those. Yeah. Especially if you're playing solo. Yeah, if you were to buy this and play solo, you would play an hour and then mm -hmm. go online and say, is there any more to it? And the answer would be no. Mm -hmm. It would be no. Everything traditional in terms of progression in this game is non-existent basically it's just you grind these pretty generic pretty copy paste quests until you get the jacket you like you know <laughs> yeah. um and that would suck uh we should say that you know i don't know if people i think people started to figure this out decently now but you can the game is either full priced but you can also get it on game pass which is the microsoft ex Sub subscription sort of thing? subscription service where it's like 10 bucks a month and you get a bunch of these games and they've said from Sea of Thieves onwards all of the new first party titles will be included in that and so it's sort of tricky to say to talk about as well in terms of value because I bought it for full price because I like owning my games like a weirdo uh, well <laughs> owning <laughs> 
I don't actually own this <laughs> anyways. I just paid a ninety dollar license for it. But yeah, you have also you have been playing it through Game Pass. You have paid zero dollars for it because I paid you can get a two week. Game. Yeah, you can get a two week free. Everyone with a Microsoft account can get a two week <laughs> free trial. Of yeah. Game I, Pass I mean, I'm and... not gonna I'm not gonna cancel it. It's gonna renew on its own. So yeah. it will eventually it'll be like ten bucks, then twenty bucks, and thirty bucks. But right yeah. now it's at zero. And by this time next year, you'll have paid ninety dollars, but you'll have gotten a bunch of other things for it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, in terms of like traditional value, it's like as a full price game, and I'm in Canada, so full price games here are actually ninety dollars. Um, but we'll just stick with sixty um, because that's the U.S. price. It's, and, yeah, it's like universal for most people. Yeah, and um, charging sixty dollars for this game, I think, is. Uh, I don't know what the right word is. I, it's not I a, know you want to say scam. <laughs> I, I don't necessarily want to say scam. I sort of also want to. I want to say like offensive a little bit, like sort of like. Uh, okay. It's if just people, it's wrong. Let's say it's incorrect. Yeah, if there will be some people who have bought this game and they yeah. didn't know that Game Pass existed. Yes. And they're gonna get home, maybe be one of those poor souls who gets locked in a brig. Yeah. And then they're gonna find out that people like me didn't pay a penny. Or in a bit, I paid 10 bucks. Yeah. And they paid 50 more. And it's just like, I don't know. I haven't bought a physical game from a store in a long time. But unless there's a big sticker on the front of the game saying, if you want to try this for free, yeah. go to xbox.com slash game pass. I think that's kind of naughty if that isn't the case. I would agree. It's, yeah. It's a bit, because there's a lot of people who don't know about game pass. Yeah. I don't know. It's just a, it's a strange. The way it's released is very strange. Yeah, it's. I I, it's been compared to No Man's Sky a lot, which I think is fair. To I some see extent. the comparisons. I think it's a yeah. bit extreme, but I understand. It is. It is a bit from. extreme um, because No Man's Sky. It and I mean, this is coming from me, who I would say I'm pretty in the in the loop. Let's say. No Man's Sky felt deceptive. As someone that was paying attention to everything said about it, it still felt deceptive. And it yeah. certainly did not feel like a $60 game. Mm-hmm. It was like, this should be a $20 early access title. Um, this feels similar to that, especially in, where it's like, you know, content wise, there's a lot of problems. Like traditional content wise, there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of low, sort of lower quality aspects to the game in terms of. What's there? Um, the highs of, of No Man's Sky were kind of non-existent for me. It was sort of just this middle-of-the-road yes. hum of mild enjoyment. I never had a particularly bad time with No Man's Sky. I sort of enjoyed the relaxed nature of it. But the high points of Sea of Thieves are higher than just about every other multiplayer game I've played. Um, yeah, I agree. And so it's sort of... It, yeah, the whole business model of it I think the I think the reception for the game would be a lot better if it was only playable through Game Pass, or if it was just a straight up free to play game. Um, or twenty bucks. Or or yeah, or if it was like it's twenty dollars and that's that. And because I think going back to No Man's Sky, a big problem is I think as a consumer, when you pay for a full price game, you expect. You you expect a certain amount of content, and I think that's completely fair. Yeah. Most people have bought a lot of full price games, and everyone has a set level of expectations, which you build up across multiple years of playing AAA games. Yeah. And when it's like nowhere near that, you you start to think, well, why the fuck was it sixty dollars? That's mm-hmm. that's a lot of money for a lot of people. Yeah, and especially when you can get something like Fortnite for free. Mm-hmm. Or PUBG, which was thirty dollars, and put hundreds of hours into that, and and you know like, I no man's or fuck Sea of Thieves is in a lot of ways just a PvP game. Like that sort of feels like what they what they want the game to be. Really, is this yeah. PvP thing where the the quests sort of guide you towards meeting potentially other players, and it's not necessarily mm-hmm. a hostile PvP. It can be friendly, you know, there's no punishment for teaming up with people. Yeah. So if you're talking about, like, multiplayer-only games, which this really it is, um, it's a hard value, a hard mm. thing to, to sell someone on, especially because there's not really... Even something like Fortnite or Battlegrounds, 
there's a sense of progression to those games in that you can get better at them. Yeah. And I don't, there's nothing really in Sea of Thieves that you can get better at either. Like, you can maybe a little bit with you maneuvering to, the ship. Yeah, but you like, don't have to shoot the cannons a bit better. You've got to lead your shots. Yeah, but, like, that's about it. You know, the, the weird thing about Sea of Thieves is that the stuff it's really good at isn't, isn't traditional video game things. Like, the combat is not very good. Like, the on-foot combat is, like, very strange. Because you have four I shots. I don't mind the, the, the armed combat. Sorry, the firearms. I don't like the cutlass combat. Yeah, it's it's fine, you know, against a couple of skeletons, like, every 40 minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but, like, if you do the Skull Fortress, which is this basically sort of, like, I don't know, raid-ish raid, raid -ish yeah. encounter, where it's like, you just have to fight skeletons for 45 minutes. And it's like, that's when it really starts to fall apart. Or extended player versus player combat encounters, where it's like, I have five bullets in my gun. And I shoot, and then I have to, like, run away and restock and then heal and restock my bananas. And, mm. you know, and the hitboxes are really generous. So there's, like, nothing traditional in that sense to get good at. I, I think it's fine that there's no skill tree or whatever. I don't need every fucking game to have a skill tree. Mm -hmm. um, and I also don't need every game to have a, any any major progression if they just wanted it to be emergent player moments that's fine because as we've said those player moments have been really really good um yeah but it, it's a very strange game um yeah because it is really not good at anything traditional in as a video game aside from like the aesthetics the things it's good at are like kind of weird and specific to sea of thieves and and specific to players like if you don't have a group of friends to play this with you should not buy it um yeah especially not for 60 dollars that's for good sure. god no yeah and um it's also hard to review a game like this because it's sort of you know like destiny where it's like this, what is this game going to be like in six months or a year mm -hmm. um yeah because they've already said they're going to support it heavily yeah, yeah, I mean, they have to. Like, <laughs> if they just launched it and then, you know, put out stability updates and were like, this is the game, it would be uh, d more, even more of a disaster. Even though this, I wouldn't say, has been a disaster. People, no. it's got lots of people have played it and lots of people have agreed that, you know, it's really good at some stuff uh, mm -hmm. in, in ways that no other game are. But, um, yeah, I almost feel I like... Think... Well, go ahead. I was just going to say that when it comes to the content thing. Mm. Um, I disagree with people saying that there should be like campaign things. I understand if people look at the game and they think uh, it's a great structure for that type of yeah. game. But I they've never that. misled people no. about what this game is. You're, you're right when you say it's a PvP focused game. Yeah. But I think the only thing I really think the game is lacking at launch is more tools and things to interact with yeah if the game's focused on pvp then i think it should have more ways to engage in pvp mm -hmm. i think the idea of shooting yourself out of a cannon onto a ship is really cool um the explosive kegs add a surprising amount of options in pvp me and my friend andy uh, we were in a sloop, a two-man ship, and we made the challenge to take on a four-man ship, and the only way we ever got close and were successful was using explosive kegs and carrying it onto their ship and exploding them, which led to some great highlights. And I had a small revelation the other night when I was watching Fortnite, and I think the way that game has kept itself so relevant and mm. boomed its popularity is because it keeps chucking in these new tools, yeah. like the impulse nade and these guided rockets, that keep new fresh moments coming that people are sharing around social media. And I think for a game that's focused on PvP, just having guns, swords, cannons, and explosive kegs is yeah. just not much of an arsenal. If they had included a few other things out the gate, like Molotovs. Um, we had a little brainstorm the other day on Discord, but I've forgotten some of the ideas. But like, 
the more tools you have, the more ways systems can collide and the more variation there is in combat. And for a game that's focused on PvP, once you've blown up a ship with a keg, once you've flown out of a cannon and landed on a ship and then stabbed someone in the back, you kind of start to run out of crazy experimental ideas to try in PvP yeah. and it becomes a cannon and repair battle. And I think that's really my only complaint about the game. I don't really mind that there's no progression or story stuff. I like the sandbox and we've had some great moments. Mm -hmm. The Kraken was a very fun event, very impressive to look at. Um, just, I think a few more tools in the arsenal would really have kept the game feeling fresh combat-wise. Yeah, it's it's said, a sandbox game thing. with, like, a limited possibility space. Like, a surprisingly limited. Yeah, like, what um, if I could, um, chuck a snake in a cannon and fire a snake onto <laughs> their ship, and then they'd be trying to walk around and the snake would be poisoning them. It's, it's yeah. a stupid idea, but, like, that would create more experimentation, more highlights on the internet for people to look at, and I think there just needs to be more variation in the combat. Yeah, I remember last week you said, like, the power of the powder keg, like, it's such a simple thing, mm -hmm. but you can do so much with it and have mul many good little moments around the powder keg and trying to use it to blow someone up or blow, sneak yeah. it under their ship. And Ex explosive Barrow is, like, one of the most generic game items yeah. you can think of, and it changes so much. Yeah, and I think adding more to that uh, is what they need to do, really. Like, mm -hmm. the... But at the same time, like, if you wanted to, I don't know, I, I definitely understand people saying they wish that there was more traditional single player stuff in it because, like, for me, I look at that and think, I would love a single player yeah, stuff in this game because it looks so great and is so lovely it would work. and fun. It would work. Yeah. It would work. yeah, but it doesn't need it. Um, I, yeah, I think the limited sandbox tool set and the kind of shocking repetitiveness of the 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 quests uh, are my two biggest negatives really it's like i don't really want to do any more gold hoarder quests like i'm up to the level 22 or something and mm -hmm. they're all just the same like it's either a riddle or a, a map and you know i it's it's nice there's only so many islands though and they've gotten more challenging which is cool but the just the act of looking for the the clue and then finding the thing and digging up the treasure chest and getting like 300 gold it's like eh, i don't need to do this anymore like i'm good uh it's yeah so i mean it's only been i think we're, we're on two weeks now since it's come out and um i sort of feel like i've had enough of it for now like yeah they need it's like okay i'm i'm good i've had great moments with it um but they need to put out an update soon that adds some other element into it. Uh, mm -hmm. I but, think, uh, see, you know. I want to compare Sea of Thieves to Destiny 2 in the way where most of the like frustration comes from people who want to see the game go further. It's not like yes. pure hatred. It's usually fans who are like, they can envision where this concept could go yeah. and they just desperately want it to be where it isn't right now. And I think that's what, where a lot of the backlash towards Sea of Thieves is. They're like, if this had more stuff in it, this would be one of the greatest games out right now. Yeah, and so that's why it's sort of hard to uh, review now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was really hard. Because objectively, it, there's not much in it. So yeah. we should give it a thumbs down for lack of content. But then at the same time, I've had more fun in this game than any other game this year. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so yeah, I agree. I agree. It's, it's and, really and it's hard to difficult. review as well because, like Destiny 2... Um, when Destiny 2 came out, I was like, this is great. This game, I am having a great time. But then three months later, like, you realize the problems it has and how much of those problems are are based on a lack of support. Uh, and so Sea of Thieves, like, if their first update that adds something new isn't until, like, June or mm. July, and yeah, it's, like, yeah. one every five months, that's, that's a huge problem. Like, this is... They should be adding something to this like every three weeks, you know. Uh, yes, they need or, the epic approach. Yes, yeah. Fortnite, like Fortnite's popular for many reasons, and one of them, the biggest ones, is that they're supporting it like no one else has supported a game. Well, maybe not mm. quite, but like, you know, mm, they've close, got a huge studio, it. and they've got a lot of money, and they've got a lot of talent, and they're putting all of that into supporting this game. And it's like every two weeks something some big new thing is added to Fortnite and like that's how you do it you know um 
So, yeah, I, I'll be fascinated to see what Sea of Thieves is like by the end of the year uh, and yeah, how much it, they've added to it. Its future is very dependent on its support. Yeah. Um, and, I don't know, we've seen games like uh, Rainbow Six Siege, which started off pretty weak, and then when yeah. the support came back from the grave. Definitely. Games like Fortnite, which have gone to basically, I would put it a Minecraft 2 status by now. Sure, With yeah. it, the, the worldwide phenomenon it's become. And I think that's all from updates and support. See yeah. if these can, can do the same, so we'll have to see how it goes for them. Yeah, it's going to be really fascinating. And I think, you know, if 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 it is intriguing to you, remember that you can play it for two weeks for free. Yes. And honestly, if you remember to cancel your Game Pass in time, uh, two weeks of free time with this game is like more, way more than enough than what you'll need. Like you'll you'll play it and in the first hour, if you're playing solo, you, you might like it or not. And if you get a couple of friends together, you, you play it for two weeks and you'll probably have a great time. Yeah. And if you really liked it and then you know maybe in six months come back and play some more of it and pay 10 bucks um it's good that they have it on game pass because it, it is really like a very friendly game to the game pass stuff but mm -hmm. it definitely yeah i definitely think it should be only available on game pass or yeah you know, 20 we, we don't do like something. We don't do ratings on this video series, but yeah. if I did, it would be a fresh tomato for Game Pass and a big old rotten splat for sixty dollars. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, that's yes, I agree. That would be my conclusion for Sea of Thieves. Moving on. Speaking of conflicting video games. <laughs> yeah, Far Cry Five. I want to take the lead for Please Far do. Cry Five. You have a three. Three words saying that I need to know Ooh, unlocks the secret of the this. Ubisoft universe. Yes. So Far Cry, the franchise, has always kind of been my guilty pleasure. Hmm. I played the first one a lot multiplayer-wise with my friends on the OG Xbox. Oh, like Far Cry. Far Cry, Far Cry like yeah. Crisis or Crytex Far Cry? <laughs> yes. Jesus Christ. Wow. Um, I've never I, played that, actually. I enjoyed Far Cry 2. It was kind of a miserable story. Your guy had malaria and your guns were always jamming and fire was spreading. And I liked it. Uh, I thought Far Cry 3 was a, a good step up. It went a bit, um, you know, less serious. A bit more user-friendly to say. But I liked the third game. And then number four came around and it was a bit too close to three. But they implemented new tools like bloody riding elephants. And they just put enough new things in the game like wingsuits to make it interesting enough for me to finish yeah um i like blood dragon and i skipped primal but when it when it comes down to ubisoft games i was really on the fence um but then assassin's creed origins came out and ubisoft showed that they're really i don't know if taking criticism is the right thing i they probably just saw a lack of sales and were like people are getting bored of our IPs and we need to freshen them up. But I really enjoyed Origins and I'd quit Assassin's Creed, essentially. I quit after Black Flag and Origins. I was like, wow, they've really made some steps uh, towards, you know, just bringing some new life into these IPs which have got stale. And when I saw the, the announcement stuff for Far Cry 5, I was really excited. I played every Far Cry except for Primo, which I, I barely even count as an entry into the franchise. I liked the look of the grittiness, and after Origins, I was like, yes, some fresh life into this guilty pleasure of mine. Mm -hmm. And Far Cry 5 is, to be honest, the first disappointment of the year for me. And I just want to start off by saying that it's kind of all my fault, <laughs> because I expected Far Cry 5 to be less Far Cry, and it's just more Far Cry. It's it is. really Far yeah. cry E. And I just wanted to start out by saying you can't really complain about Far Cry 5 being really Far Cry E. <laughs> it's it called has a Far five Cry in 5. The title. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's called Far Cry, so I just think it's a stupid thing to say or to complain about. Um, I have a statement here, which I told you about. It's three words, and I think it really summarizes my feelings on Origins. And Far Cry 5. And you ready for this? Oh, I am so ready. I'm, I'm very, very happy with this. So Ubisoft, their focus at the moment 
is renovation over innovation. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. So that's pretty accurate. Yeah. So for Origins and Far Cry 5, really they just cleaned up those games. Yes. They're still the same as the other ones, but they're just vastly polished. They've brought down all the minimap garbage and they've just, I don't know, they just made it streamline, mm -hmm. slick and quality of life stuff. And they have improved um, on the core concepts of the Watch game. Watch Dogs 2 was the same way. Which one? Watch Dogs 2 was the same way. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Good shout. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of positive to say about Far Cry 5. I really like all the improvements that they've made to the side quests. They replaced the radio towers with caches. We'll get into like more detail on the side stuff and the format of the game in a second. But I really kind of expected a little bit more additions to Far Cry 5. Sure, yeah. Because from four to so from, from three to four, they added just a bunch of new tools. You can bloody get on an elephant. You can wingsuit around. They made the sandbox feel fresh. And I really can't think of any new things in five. I mean, you've got the buddies, but like that's about no, it. And they don't they do don't, much. They don't do anything. But those buddies, like them. there were buddies in Far Cry 2. Uh, yeah. There was a buddy system in Far Cry 2, which is very similar to this. So not mm -hmm. particularly new. Um, before we get into it, I should say that I have almost the exact opposite uh, history with Far Cry. <laughs> yeah. Um, I played Far Cry 2 and kind of love hated it at the time i only played a couple hours i mean i was like 13 or whatever and i was like what the fuck is this crazy game i think i love it but also <laughs> screw this i'm never playing it again um i really really want to go back and play far cry 2 again because oh boy because i mean i only ever played a few hours of it and now that i'm older and know my weird tastes thinking about all the crazy shit in far cry 2 makes me think that they might actually i might actually really like it like the the map being in world and like the crazy healing and having malaria and <laughs> yeah. all the fire propagation. Like I think Far Cry 2 might actually be up my alley in terms of the weird, crazy bullshit in that game. Um, Did you know, do you remember there's no map as well? You have a physical map you need to hold up to your face I know. while driving. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> that sounds like awesome. That, that, I feel like that stayed around for a few of them. Maybe uh, three? No, I don't think so. I no, I just that. played three. Yeah. So anyways, um, Far Cry 3... Everyone, it came out and everyone's like, this game is amazing. And I played it, you know, I played it to the end. And it was like 20 hours and I was like, yeah, this is okay. It's fun. I had I had some fun with Far Cry 3. I, I mm -hmm. wouldn't say I loved it, but I, I enjoyed it mostly. Uh, except the, all the story missions are just terrible. And Far Cry 3 was also the beginning of me never caring about a Ubisoft story ever again. <laughs> Assassin's Creed 2's ending was the first punch. Far Cry 3... Uh, about halfway through when they just throw Voss in the dumpster was like, oh, okay, they don't care. And I don't care anymore either. Far Cry 4, I played like 20 hours of it on both the PS4 and the PC and never liked it. <laughs> I don't know why. I couldn't tell you why. I just never had a good time with Far Cry 4. And Blood Dragon, my save got corrupted two hours in. So I never, so I hate Blood Dragon as well. <gasps> I love because Blood Dragon. Because I lost my save right when I was into it. And never got back to it um and primal i never touched because <laughs> come on um so and also i have not gotten a I, I ubisoft ubisoft all their big open world games i've played about 10 hours of every one of them since black flag i've played about 10 hours of and then just stopped because i was like yeah i'm mm. bored <laughs> um so Far Cry 5, for whatever reason, in most, most for the most part, is the first Ubisoft open world game that I've like put a lot of time into and enjoyed yeah. since Black Flag, which was yeah. five years ago almost, four, four and a half years ago. Um, but it is not like, it's definitely different from AC Origins. Origins is like, Origins kind of changes the identity of assassin's creed to an extent maybe too much to my liking where it's like yeah now this, is, was, this is just sort of an open world game origins was a bigger step forward for me personally yeah. i i really really liked origins and i thought the world was incredible i agree and uh, except that i think it sort of has lost 
a little bit of the Assassin's Creediness or a little too much of it for me for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah, I can see that. And that it's just sort of like it's a historical open world game where you you're gonna, you can do some assassiny like things, but but AC Origins is a quality game. Um, Far Cry, yeah, the first two hours is like, oh, this is Far Cry. Like, yeah, they they've streamlined it and made intelligent changes, um, which yeah, we'll, we can get into now. Um, yeah, they've like part of my big problem with three and four was that you would you know. Go to the, the climb the tower and do the spin around thing and scan the map and then your mini map would just be covered in like fifty icons and yeah and all the like there were so many side activities just littering the map and you'd like run to something do it open the map okay I guess I go over here and do this and and it was just I don't know I, I that that's a big part of it is like having to go into the map over and over and over again and it's just such a clusterfuck of icons. And I don't know what any of them mean. And I don't know why I should do any of them. Um, with Far Cry 5, they've been like... What I like about... I think Okay, I think my favorite thing about Far Cry 5 is that you can just... I can launch it and play it for like 90 minutes and never open my map. Uh, yeah. For like... For the majority. Until now, I'm, now I'm you know, sort of nearing nearly done playing it. And there's not much left on my map. But that first like 10 hours with the game... Where I went into the Johns region in the southwest, and I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm just walking, and like, oh, here's a thing, oh, here's a thing, oh, there's a cougar here, oh, this this bear just did a backflip after getting hit by a car, oh, there's a side quest, oh, there's a shrine to blow up, oh, there's a main quest, oh, the main quest took me here, and now I'm doing this prepper stash, and yeah, they've they've died, they've cleaned up their HUD substantially, thank God. Oh, yeah. There's like almost no HUD, which I like a lot, and they've cleaned up the map a lot and just made the um, the process of finding new content much more organic in a way yeah. that I really enjoy. I just want to interject quickly. Yes. Please. Just to just to conclude my opening statement, even though my expectations for this game were misguided. Yeah. Um, and I have I started off this review with a a big complaint. This is the best Far Cry game they have made. So far, I agree. I, 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 I fully believe that. I agree, but I also think it's in some ways the worst fucking video game I maybe have ever played in some other areas. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm kidding. That's extreme. That's extreme. But wow, uh, I I do think it is the the best Far Cry they've made, and it's the certainly the one that I've enjoyed the most. Um, yeah. But we'll get into like the parts of it that are bad because I really do think parts of this game are just terrible. But. Um, <laughs> The core loop of it, um, and, and just exploring their environment because it's you know it's a Ubisoft game. It's got a phenomenal environment. Um, I've been playing it on the PC hooked up to my TV, and it's one of the best looking things I've ever seen. Really, it looks, it looks spectacular. Oh, um, and you know, just yes, the core moment to moment uh, the, of Far Cry Five is the best they've done. Absolutely. Yeah, um, the game, the gunplay is certainly improved. It's definitely improved, yeah. And the, I don't the side remember, stuff... I don't remember there being such a defined projectile system in the Far think, Cry games. No, I think you're right. Yeah, I feel like they borrowed a little bit of their learnings from Wildlands, which is to make it much more obvious. Uh, like, even just like the visualization of the bullet yeah, I don't is very reminiscent of my Wildlands. Shots ever. It's much easier. And, and I booted up Far Cry 4 the other night and like encountered like immediately the first enemy encounter there were like four heavily armored guys and i had to shoot them with like seven grenade launcher shots to blow them up Oof. whereas in this game everyone you know you just shoot them like once and they're dead like yeah time to kill is very low in this game it's, yeah which i think goes a long ways like there's a lot of really small improvements littered throughout the game that go that add up to make it mm -hmm. a way better better playing more organic more enjoyable much more chaotic in my experience yeah um and funny the the chaos has been really entertaining to me in a way that i never experienced in the past games um there's some good side quests yeah do you want to sort of transition into the side stuff a little bit yeah because i think the side stuff in a ubisoft game is almost like 80 to 70 percent of it yes and yeah in the old far cries it was radio towers and collectibles and in this game, it's pretty much outposts, which 
uh, have been a little bit cleaned up since the last game. They're really quick and easy to get through. And there's actual re rewards. You get like unique side quests and things for completing them. There's the... Caches? Yeah, prepper stashes. Yeah, which are mini platformer puzzle uh, activities which have a really good variety to them across oh, the map. Yeah. They're really good. And then good. there are side quests, which yeah. definitely vary in quality. There are some yeah. which are very generic Ubisoft, collect this thing, kill this animal. There's even one which has got radio towers. And I was like, you <laughs> yeah. cheeky bastards, I know what you're doing here. But hidden amongst those, there are some really high quality, fun, well-written quests with a lot of personality. Yeah, there. a lot of the side stuff is where like the dumb sort of bad GTA style parody stuff comes out and that stuff's like I wouldn't say it's particularly good but it was entertaining yeah. it's entertaining uh, it's fun as know. long as you don't play a main quest straight after one of those quests because yeah. the tonal clashes is like whiplash lash inducing yeah <laughs> like, you know Jesus there's right you do a quest and eventually it ends in a guy being I don't know vaporized or something and you get a, a weird alien gun sort of thing, and it's like, Oh, there's okay. the testy festy. Yeah, yeah, like that stuff, it's like, this is dumb. Like, this is just dumb. And if I think about it, it's probably bad, um, but like, I don't, I'm I having, it. I'm having, I'm smiling, and like, it's silly, and I'm enjoying myself. Um, yeah. John's region is definitely the best area in this game as well. Yeah, weirdly I, so. It's quite unbalanced, almost. I wish I had known that. Uh, because yeah, my John's first 10 hours strong. were my favorite easily yeah. with it. Um, like, the main missions are fine in his area, which we'll get to the main missions. Um, the side stuff is really goofy. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really open. There's lots of fields, and it, it has a really nice flow. That whole area is fantastic. It definitely seems like the thing they made first. <laughs> yeah, and 100%. They, like, sort of hastily made the other two areas. Um we should. I, I. I don't know if I said the prepper stashes are fantastic. Yes, they're really they're, good. Yeah, they replace the the radio towers in a sense. In that, yeah, each of them is a little exploration puzzle basically, and yeah. uh, you get a bunch of money and a bunch of perk points at the end. Yeah, good rewards for doing for doing them as well. And they've even all of them have a little story tied to them as well. Mm -hmm. um, I've deliberately saved three or four of them just because they're the most fun thing in the game. That I, I, they're. I would have played, like, if there were another 40 of them and they were all this good, I would have just kept doing them. Just, yeah. I, I almost wish I could, like, repopulate them all and just do them all again because they're fun. They're satisfying and simple and enjoyable. And, uh, you know, like everything else, it takes five minutes in this game. Everything is, like, two mm -hmm. to five minutes and then you just move on to the next thing without opening your map and yeah, you just keep pacing. going. And uh, I like that stuff a lot. Um, I, and I like the companion stuff. Not with people, they're useless. But I haven't I ever used a person. No. <laughs> it's just been Boomer and Cheeseburger. Yeah, I've just had Boomer and Cheeseburger the whole time, and it's great. Boomer, like, not very useful, but he's a he's a good dog, and he's a good dog I dog. like him. He sometimes marks things, and that's fun, and he sometimes brings you money and guns, and that's that's good. Yeah. And Cheeseburger is a giant bear um, named Cheeseburger uh, <laughs> who will just need? kill kill immediately. As soon as an enemy is nearby, he's just running in there and killing everyone. Yeah. And it's hilarious. Uh, that stuff's really entertaining. And um, yeah, I I think Far Cry Five uh, is not. It's it's it would be like one of my favorite games of the year already if the main stuff wasn't so bad. Yeah, do you and want, I would. I'll, I'll let you take it away. It sure, because I have I finished. Have some th I have finished the story. Yeah, I know you have some things to say. Um. Before you go ahead, I want to just say that the game starts off really strong when it comes it to It does. Stuff. I agree. The opening 20-minute uh, sequence uh, where you go to arrest the main villain is very effective. It's extremely <laughs> grim. It's extremely unsettling, you know, with the, the um, Star Spangled yeah. Banner hymn is sort of being sung. And it's a bit nerve-wracking. It's It was very unpleasant. And I was like, this is freaky in a way that is good. That's great. It's like, wow, they're, maybe they'll actually do it. Because when this game was announced with that trailer a couple of E3s ago where like uh, a cult guy is like banging someone's head against a church bell and there's like sinner painted on the side. I was like, from the moment they announced it, I was like, this is going to be terrible uh, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I don't get invested in Ubisoft stories. Like I said, 
Um, they, I've always thought they build good worlds and then they fail to make good missions and they fail to tell good stories in those worlds. And Far Cry is like the pinnacle of those because Far Cry 3, they had Voss, who was this incredible presence, uh, a phenomenal villain. And you had these douchebag main characters who were just terrible. And you're like, oh man, they're going to like, they're going to do it. They're going to be like, oh, you are playing as this piece of shit and you just like, you and then they don't. And then they just threw Voss in the garbage through a bad drug trip sequence. And they were like, now let's move on to something else. And every Ubisoft story has been bad for the last five years. And you're a sucker if you get invested in their stories. I'm sorry. But, uh, and I was right. I was right. Far Cry 5's story is embarrassing. Yeah, strange. Could it, I, I think it, I actually didn't mind John's area too much. There's not yeah, much yeah. going on. There's no complexity to it. He just yeah. wants you to uh, confess your sins. There's kind of an interesting scene at the end where he's like cutting it into people, then cutting out that flesh, and it's a bit gritty. And I haven't concluded the game or done faiths, but I did Jacob's, and boy, was Jacob so terrible. Like, going from John's to Jacob was so jarring. It was like, yeah. it was like, going back to Far Cry games. It was so strange. Um, I, I'll let you continue because you've beaten it, but for me so far, I've, I've probably got like five, ten hours left. Miss Potential, it seems, with oh, yeah. the main storyline. Or just mishandled, I don't know. Well, yeah, the John's area, it's like, okay, you know, there's this poorly handled tonal clash of very grim and serious main story and very dumb side stuff. Um... Could have been done better, but, like, it wasn't offensive, you know? I, like, if yeah. this was written by the Wolfenstein people or Rockstar, like, they're very good, you know, those guys are very good at balancing Blending serious those. and absurdity. Yeah. Um, yeah, but throughout John's era, it's like, this villain is corny, and, like, they're trying so hard to make him seem menacing, and it's just kind of a little sad, but, like, it's not not offending me. Um, <laughs> but... The, every there are three regions and there's four resistance levels per region that and you just build up the resistance levels by doing side shit and every time one of the circles the one of the pips on the on the resistance bar is ticked um, it triggers a story mission which you have no control over triggering it just starts uh, and interrupts you interrupts the very nice flow of side content and in John's region the first time it happens is really good actually it you you get taken and then the priest breaks you out and you can hear him like sh shouting a sermon as you're coming to and he's shooting guys with a magnum and you're like, yeah, you broke me out of the out of the van that they were taking me in. That That's cool. And then it happens again and, and you're like, oh, okay, whatever. I guess I'll just shoot my way out of this. Th and then it happens again. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, this is a little silly. And then you go into faith region and it happens again and you go on a bad drug trip sequence and then it happens again and again and again and then you go into Jacob's region and he's like I've got a music box that triggers you and then you do a shooting gallery where I say call the herd over and over again and then you yeah, just wake up escaped fuck? and then you and then they do it again and again and again and it's the same thing every time yeah you get captured by the enemy by the villains in this game you get captured and escape from them four times per area so like 12 <laughs> times in the game yeah and you're like the first time it's cool and the second time you're like oh that's this is a little silly but this is happening again and then by the time you get to face in jacob's regions it's just it's shocking to me how like how ridiculous it is and how poorly thought out this is where it's like we've got this great world we've got this great organic way of getting you into side content and we're just going to interrupt that every hour or so and have you play this, like, astonishingly bad mission where, like, in Jacob's area, he stands out there and says, the weak are, st we, we got to call the herd and I'm going to play the music box and the weak are, need to be slayed and the strong, right? Call the herd. And you're like, fucking shut up. And you go through this bad shooting gallery and the enemies spawn in the exact same spot. Every time, yeah, you use the same weapon every time, um, and each time you do it, one more enemy is there, like than the last one, basically. And then you just wake up out in a field somewhere, and it's like, what? Huh? Uh, so the main story missions, boy, I thought they were bad in the previous Far Cry games, where they're like, 
all, all the Ubisoft games main story missions are you better play this uh, this very specific way or you fail uh, and that's always been a problem with their games since Far Cry 3 onwards is here's this emergent world uh, here are these story missions you better play them right oh you failed oh you stra- you wandered one foot off the path restart the mission um, I thought they were bad before but the <sighs> The fucking main missions in this game are like some of the most frustrating things I've I've seen because they're just they're just so they're baffling, um, and well, and they make no really, sense. I haven't really had any frustration with them because I just I've I stopped caring very quickly and just kind oh of uh, me get too. Past them. <laughs> yeah, but it's frustrating because it's a chore and it's just a, a thing getting in the way yeah. of of the good side stuff and. You know, they've relied on drug trips too heavily in the past games. And in this game, I guess the drugs are now completely magical. Yeah, the the stuff in Faith region, region is a bit bizarre. It just makes no sense. And honestly, it ruin, like deteriorates the overall quality of the world for me. Because it's like, now there are just zombie enemies running around. And it's like, you have to yeah, shoot them in the head. They're more junkies than zombies. I mean, they're pretty much zombies. You have to shoot them in the head. Or otherwise, they fall down and then get back up, and they just sort of oh. run at you. And uh, and, and then it, uh, the ending is I. Let's say this: I laughed out loud, like a like like I haven't laughed in a while at how bad the thing they do at the end is, and Ooh, how they cut I'm to excited. credits. It was it was a laugh out of embarrassment. It was like I was watching someone's bad first student movie and they were trying to tell me something like you know trying to send a message and at the end they did this thing and and cut to the credits and used this certain song and i i I, we're not gonna take it not quite (laughs) um but you'll see what i mean it has a very high school student film feel to it in a way that was uh, yeah i just laughed I, i it was so bad and so it's just like out of nowhere there's no setup to it uh there's no payoff to anything it's just it doesn't help that i played this story in i did all of john's region which was the best and then i did all of faith's region which is like eh, and then i did all of jacob's region which is terrible so dog shit yeah yeah um that's why i said if if the main story stuff didn't exist in this game it would be great uh, yeah, which is a strange, strange thing because I a lot of their marketing was focused around the campaign and this yeah. uh, the Montana redneck cult focus, and it's the worst part of the game, and they completely it's, fucking botched it. <laughs> and like even the pre- the previous games, like Far Cry Three, Voss, like that stuff was good. Like yeah. it's he's a well handled villain. He's well written. He's very well acted. Um, Far Cry 4, the story, to my knowledge, is much more... Um, it's more simple. It's much more gray. Pagan Min is a good villain. He's flamboyant and, and charismatic. And yeah. Troy Baker did a great job with him. And um, But in this game, there there's four villains, and they're all, they all suck. Um, they all say the, the exact same lines over and over again. The main villain once at one point tells you how he killed his infant baby, and you're like, oh, I, Are you? I saw that coming instantly. I knew it as soon as he was like, Oh, they have to make him a villainous, he's gonna kill his yeah. kid. Yeah, and it's it. like, This is so embarrassing. Like, embarrassing is the only word I can ascribe, like, assign to it. It's just like, This is your villain? Like, this is, are you really, this is how you're making him menacing? Is like him telling you this detailed story of how he killed his infant, newborn, and you're like, This is, I don't want to even, I, 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 very nearly skipped all the story stuff for the last oh, like yeah. five hours because it was so bad and it has no point of view it has no goal um it's just a bunch of nonsensical bullshit trying to be edgy uh and then it ends and it's hilarious and um so yeah uh, but again if you're here for the story like you're a sucker i'm sorry but yeah they've yeah, never it's... been good um so yeah, the the main story stuff really gets in my way, but I so do enjoy the side stuff and just the the minute to minute loop. And I deliberately left of me myself a bunch of side stuff to play now that the story missions now that the story's out of the way. And yeah, 
I, it started really strong. T first 10 hours, fantastic. And then there's a middle, like, 8 or 10 hours where I was basically just getting the story stuff out of the way. And I, it was miserable. And then I intend to end strong again just doing side stuff. Mm -hmm. And so... If, if you get it, which I think if you have liked the previous Far Cry games or are in the mood for Far Cry, um, you should yeah. get it because oh, it's quite good. Oh, if you like good. Far Cry, if you like Far Cry, you'll love Far Cry 5. Yeah, and then just skip all the all the main cutscenes. Um, yeah, um, I I have a, a few more issues. I, I actually think the game's a little bit too long. I think it's a bit too big, in my opinion. Um... Uh, I felt the same way about Assassin's Creed Origins. I was really, really loving it for up to like hour 20. And I played that game for 50 hours. And <laughs> I, I'm not tracking how long I've played it on PS4, but I'm going to assume 30. Yeah, that sounds and about right. after like 15 hours, I was having a blast. And now I'm just kind of like getting a little bit fatigued by the combat. I'm trying to switch up weapons that I've, I've been using... Like the powers, not the powers, the the uh, the, the power up, uh, the stims. That's a better word yeah. for it. Like I use the fast one, the hard hitting one, and I've been running into outposts and finish the, finishing them with just a spade, which has been <laughs> very entertaining. And like I've switched to like an LMG, but there isn't much challenge in the game. No, you, you can buy a silent sniper like after the first quest, which in any other game is a end game weapon. I know yeah. this specifically because I always go for the silent sniper. I remember patiently waiting to get it in Metal Gear Solid 5. Ooh, it's yeah. always that thing where it's like, when I get this, I'm an unstoppable, sneaky bastard. Yeah. And it's like the first gun I got, and I was just an absolute murder machine. I don't even know if I've died in combat in this game, except for just being an idiot or blowing myself yeah. up or wingsuiting into the ground. I think I'm with you. It is very, very easy. It's uh, a very easy game. And yeah. I think... Which is fine. I think there's a bit too many uh, interactions when you're walking along a road. It's like they're a bit scared of you not shooting someone every, like, 30 seconds. Like, there's just cars coming up, and then you empty a car, and then yeah. two quad bikes of enemies come up, and then a prison van comes past, and then a big and tank then a of oil. Attacks. And it's just like, oh my god, I just, like, I, I, I think it's a quite a pleasant map. Let me just walk around this lake, for fuck's sake. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's kind of nice now, leaving that I have side stuff left, um, that all the regions are clear. Yeah, because yeah. Because the enemy nice population, like, is almost non-existent now in a way that's yeah. kind of... It's very pleasant now to just wander around, yeah. Yeah. But I, I feel like I've complained a lot, and it's because my expectations were skewed after Origins. Mm -hmm. um, I'm okay if Ubisoft wanted to focus on renovation, this time around, I just really hope that next time it's innovation. Because Far Cry 5, except for making the side quests uh, much more interesting, the, the, are they called preppers? I feel like I should know this by now. I've played yeah, so much prepper games. stashes, Prep yeah. <laughs> prepper stashes are great. The mini-maps all cleaned up. Uh, the gunplay is better. There's so much about the game that is improved, but it doesn't mean that I haven't played this game four times already. Yeah, I feel um, like this... If Far Cry 4 didn't exist... Yeah. Um, and Primal. Like, if, if, if Far Cry 3 was, you know, end of 2012, and then this was, like, 2015, you know, three years later. Yes, you're um, actually really right, yeah. That would be killer. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I don't know what they do next, because, like, f this still feels like a lot of Far Cry, and Far Cry 4, which is the last one we played, was, like, almost four years ago. It was at least three years ago. Yeah. Well, I think the changes they made are all positive. Um, yeah, I agree. Like, the game is, is better than it used to be. Lots yeah. of improvements. And people are really liking it. I, I think Far Cry 5 and Assassin's Creed Origins have sold really well. Oh, I yeah. Just, 5 is going to be huge. Yeah, now they have, like, a, a cleaned-up system for open-world games. I just want them to push it. Just try something else. Ubisoft's this annoying company where, like, every time I play one of their games, like, I love some stuff in it and I hate some stuff in it. I've just been waiting for that, like, 9.5 out of 10 to drop from them that isn't fucking Rayman. Like, I know they have it in them to make a, a legendary open world game, but there's always just something that I just don't really like or connect with. Yeah, and I don't know what they do next with Far Cry. Like, uh, I don't, different do villain, they put another one location. out in two years? Like, that would be crazy, I think. It just needs some new Unless it's systems very different. and ways to play it, I think. Yeah, like, I think it would be okay if it lost some of its identity, the way AC Origins did with Assassin's Creed. I, mm -hmm. I you know, it's fine that they've sort of diluted down the Assassin's Creed identity 
if because it made for a better game and maybe that doesn't intrigue me as much but it's for the better and i think far cry far cry needs it because if they just do another game where it's like now you're in mexico and yeah yeah and it's the same thing and that would be i don't think i don't think i want that granted this is you know and I, i complained about the main story stuff but like I went in with fairly basic expectations. I had low expectations for the story, and it was way worse than I thought. But <laughs> the the like, I've had a very good time playing this game. I have to say, cool. like it's and and like I said, it's the first Far Cry game that I would say I've mostly really liked, and it's the first Ubisoft game in five years that I've put significant time into. So I was in the mood, and they did enough things. Um, yeah. in the right direction. I just don't know what they do next. <laughs> no, um, me neither. But they need to do something because I'm. I think I'm a. I'm just a bit tired. I yeah. was expecting more changes from the franchise. I think it's the best one so far. They've uh, put some spit <laughs> shine into it, but I was. I was definitely expecting more innovation. <laughs> oh, we should say that the co-op. Um, oh my god, what a buggy mess that is. Good fun. Well, first of all, yeah, oh my god, it is so buggy in co-op. But <laughs> yeah. they they had... I, and I didn't pay a lot of attention to the marketing for this game because I was not super interested. But I felt like they were pushing this as like a really co-op friendly experience. Mm. Um, a lot of the trailers I thought were in co-op and, you know, lots of ads, banners like on Uplay where it's like, you can play it all in co-op. And that's true, but... The implementation is just so wrong. It's like ma- the progress only saves for the main character, for the host of yeah of the session. And it's like if we do main story missions, I would have to replay them on my own. And I, I like I don't know. It's a small thing. I, I don't want to play Far Cry with other people, anyways. Um, <laughs> I like the I like the solo sort of quiet aspect of it. Um, but it's just it was just it stood out to me as being weird because I I was under the impression that it was very co-op friendly um but it's sort of not uh, yeah in, in some strange ways um a, a minor note but you know people should know that if you're going to play it in co-op you basically need to play it with the same person for the entire time you need to be with the same person throughout the whole game mm-hmm. uh strange a strange thing i'm sure it's very hard to to get it working the way it should work but just a small note it, it's a weird thing uh yeah. Um, I'm coming away from Far Cry 5 with very mixed feelings. Um, I do recommend it for people who like Ubisoft games, people who like Far Cry games. Um, but my expectations were a little bit misaligned. Mm. I was an optimist after Origins, and I was expecting a little bit more. Uh, and it's just more Far Cry. Yeah. And I played and a lot of Far Cry. Yeah, clearly. Holy shit. Um, mm. And yeah, I'm sort of on the opposite end of that. I I was, I had pretty low expectations and have mostly had a very good time with it, and, and cool. had a, have had mostly a lot of fun with it. And I like yeah, I like the familiarity of the environment. The Midwest of North America is an un, fairly untouched area in games. It doesn't get used a lot, uh, which is a shame. And I like being able to just drive a muscle car around like in a wheat field with bison <laughs> and cows and I don't know it's just a it's an era you know it's a part of the world that I can relate to uh, in a way and it sort of brings out the chaos maybe a little bit in me I'm not sure um, <laughs> it, I just realized this there's no weather in that game no, I'm which so is sort of yeah it's sort of always sunny with partly cloud uh, I would always have loved a good thunderstorm yeah it's always sunny <laughs> I would have liked a thunderstorm in that game, but that's okay. Yeah, it would have been good. Yeah. So, yeah, Far Cry 5. It's a weird thing, but I think for the most part, it is the best, as we said, the best Far Cry 5. In in, yeah. in the important areas, I would say it's the best in, this, in the series. Yeah, and I mostly enjoyed all my time of it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. All right, moving on to A Way Out. For those of you who don't know, A Way Out is from that crazy drunken jet lagged screaming <laughs> e3 guy the guy came on well, actually was it e e3 that was the uh the game keely of, po- show the, the game the awards? awards yeah the keely's uh, whatever yeah, they're it was, whatever they're it was that guy who was screaming about the oscars he had also worked on brothers a tale of two sons 
Yes, he was the creative lead of that as well. Yeah, we reviewed that game. <laughs> that was way, one of the way first back. ever videos we reviewed. First yeah. ever games. And uh, that was a really cool, interesting indie game. Yeah. Had a fun novelty where you were controlling two characters, one on each thumbstick. I don't know if, how you played it on PC, but I assume it was like WASD and the arrow keys or something like that. Yeah, you were controlling two characters, and no spoilers, but at the ending, it kind of comes together and uses that novelty to elevate the story and emotions. And then they announced a way out, which is a two-player prison escape game where... Each person is playing one of the characters, but you are seeing the same thing at the same time. Yeah. It is split screen no matter where you are, if you're playing it locally or over the internet. And also, only one person has to own the game, which I think is a nice addition. You don't really it, see yeah. that very often. And you can't... You have to have someone oh, to play yes. it with. Yes, it is there... forced, mandatory co-op. Yeah, and there's no matchmaking... But you can play it online over the internet. So you basically have to have a friend either sit beside you on a couch or through the power of the internet. Uh, and there's no other way to play it, which yeah, was which the main is risky, I think. Uh, yeah, definitely. And that was the main thing that was interesting to me about it was like when they announced it at E3. You know, he said, "Oh, it's the, from the guy that was the creative director of Brothers," and it's like, okay, that was a very good little game. With a fun gimmick, and here's another yeah. one with a fun gimmick, and, uh, you know, they said it's co-op only, and there are no compromises. This whole game has been designed for this one specific way to play it, and and you sit down and play it. And I I really like, I don't know, I, I like that idea. Just, just the idea that a, a developer is like, no, this is, the whole game is like this, and if you can't, if you can't find someone to play it with, then you don't get to play it, and... You know, that is maybe a bummer to some people, but um, I like it. I like that some... It's, the coolest thing about A Way Out to me is that it's something different. Yeah. Um, there's, there's people out there that are still experimenting with formats and the way games play. Yeah. Which is nice. I think there's two main aspects to A Way <clears> Out. There <throat> is the story slash characters and the adventure they go on. And there is the novelty of how the screen separates each character. Because the fact that uh, each person has half a screen gives you the ability for the adventure to kind of split off and for each player to go in different directions. I don't think you ever really split, like you don't like split country-wise. No. But there are parts of the game where you're like really separated. Uh, and it used the format in an interesting and creative way, but I will let you choose which we push forward with, the story or I guess the novelty. Well... I think they're really like tied together for me because I think the, okay. the 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 writing and voice acting and like the basics of the story are very well basic. Uh, it's a it's not a fantastically well written game. It's not a fantastically well acted game. Um, none of it's bad. It's just no, it's, it's very serviceable. It, it's serviceable, yes. Um, but I think it's. The interest and inf and enjoyment for me was maintained throughout because of the novelty. So, yeah, you know, sort of like a heavy rain where it's like, this is kind of bad in some areas, but like we're having fun throughout the whole time for, for different reasons than the plot. And this is like, I was not really invested in the plot or the characters, but I was excited to see what they do with their gimmick all the way through. And it, and it worked for me. I don't know. It, uh... Yeah, they were consistently creative and varied with simple mini game esque ways to be cooperative. <laughs> yeah. The first half of the game is you escaping from a prison. And I feel like that was the most cooperative area. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, helping each other out, distracting guards while one person does this. Or uh, I am passing a tour over to your cell while you are getting searched or something along that line. And so when you're escaping, you have like little mini games where you're back to back going up a vent and you have to do like some timing. It feels very party game-esque at yeah. times. And I liked the variation and the continued, I don't know, experimentation with how you can make little cooperative quick time things happen. It was it was interesting and fun. Yeah, they, they're good about keeping the gimmick varied throughout like it's not mm. just it's not just a standard third person adventure game where you know we see each other's screens it's they're 
the prison stuff definitely, like you said, we definitely work together the most in that area. But, you know, once you're out, you've got some, you, there's a boat section and there's a couple of chase scenes and... Yeah, it's kind of reminiscent they, of like GTA Heists, that type of co-op where one person has a role and the other person yeah. has a completely separate role and you both got to do your job. Yeah, and they... they as I expected, you know, we were going to... we. Uh, we wanted to finish this game before we reviewed it because it's short and it's story driven. And yeah. as we sort of said uh, yesterday, it's brothers came together uh, in an important way at the end, uh, and it sort of justified its whole gimmick in a, in a sense uh, with the way it ended. Um, and I think you know reviewing brothers without seeing the ending would have been bad a bad idea. And uh, the, we won't like spoil the ending for this, but like they do something similar, let's say to brothers. So there's sort of they do a they they sort of justify the gimmick with a well, not justify, but they sort of you know they try to do something clever with the gimmick at the end, like they did with mm -hmm. brothers. Um, not quite as clever as brothers. No, or it was pretty predictable. Or as successful as brothers. No, yeah, yeah. Um, which sort of ties into the story stuff. The story is very. Hammy, I think is the word I said when we were when we were doing yeah, the ending. Yeah, you escape from prison and you want to get vengeance on a guy. And it's pretty that's basic, pretty, much it. pretty basic, pretty cliched. There's some corny stuff in it. Um, it's kind of like Uncharted, where it's more of a crutch for adventure stuff to occur. Yeah, it's like a sort of indie game, uh, indie Uncharted. The second half is very Uncharted, honestly. Like, the, yeah, especially really once is. you get to the jungly area, it's. Uh, mm. And I almost wish they had like hammed it up more. <laughs> okay. Because they like there's a moment which I wish we had it on camera or I had it to reference in the footage here, but there's a moment when you're like the two of us are on our own motorbikes and we both hit jumps that are basically perpendicular to each other and we on our motorcycles fly over top of each other while two other pickup trucks flip over and explode and it's the most ridiculous and corny thing I've seen in a game in a while, and it just killed yeah. me because it was so funny. Just seeing like two bikes and two trucks and an explosion and it's slow, slow motion. motion. It was yeah, it's great. it was so funny, and I wish that they had maybe I wish they had. It tries to get really serious in at some points, and I was kind of like, yeah, yeah, like jarringly so. Yeah, and the the writing and the voice acting is sort of. It's a little European, let's say, where it's like, like Heavy Rain, where they're like they're trying to be serious, but they're also trying to be Americans, and it's like eh, you're not this is, and you're not great at the writing and the voice acting, and it's all sort of a little uh, this is, this could be a lot better. I wish that they just done sort of like what Uncharted Two does, which is just say, oh, who cares? Let's just have fun. Um, yeah, which they definitely did in quite a few sequences. Yeah, I think that was why I was kind of shocked about how dark it does go at some points and how serious it goes. It's not quite like Uncharted where these scenes can occur back to back. It doesn't feel like tonal whiplash, mm. but it definitely doesn't feel cohesive tonally at times. There's a lot I of goofy of, stuff in the game. <laughs> yeah, and I kind of wish it stuck to the, the goofy yeah. stuff for, for the, the rest of the game. Every section of the game basically has a mini game as well that you can do that serves like no purpose at all. Like you can play baseball or you can uh, mm. you can do pull-ups and you can do like competitive there's a, a an arcade game and yeah, that stuff is like, it's all silly but it's fun and uh, yeah, it gets very serious at times in a way that just I don't know. It, it's sort of unnecessary. Uh, like, I get it. Yeah. I get why they did it, but I think, like, if it had maintained that tone, like, of Uncharted 2, where Uncharted 2 never really gets all that serious. Uh, it's mm -hmm. pretty pretty goofy all the way through in a way that's just makes it all very fun. And uh, I wish that they had... I want more scenes where there are multiple vehicles flying over top of each other in slow motion while an explosion is happening. <laughs> Because yeah, that was so good. I don't think there's anything wrong with a game doing serious stuff, and I, sure. I don't, I don't think it mishandles the serious stuff that badly. But no. it was just, I think they handled the goofy stuff way better. And and w once you start to like tease the players with like lots of fun schlocky moments, I just kind of yeah. want to stick with that.
I just wanted it to be goofy. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, and the co-op part of it, I don't know. I don't know the way everyone plays games in co-op, but if I'm sitting beside someone on a couch or playing a game with them through the internet, like we're also talking a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And and so I think that's something that they maybe didn't account for is that I think they expected people to like really pay attention to and get invested in their story stuff. When the reality is when you're playing games with other people, it's a lot, you're a lot more likely to talk to the other person and, and pay less attention to the story stuff. So I feel like if they had leaned into the fun goofiness more, the whole game would have been elevated because you're having fun, goofy times with someone else. Um, whereas if this, if this was a single player only game, you know, maybe it's easier to do more serious stuff because it's just one person and you're paying more attention to it. Yeah, um, right. But yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, there's not a lot to talk about because it's pretty simple. It's pretty short. Yeah. And it's it's good. I, I like yeah. I really enjoyed my time with it. I'm glad to have played it. Um the the you know, the story stuff is not great, but it's perfectly serviceable like you said. Um It's a great I it's a great gimmick and I'm glad that, that it exists. Uh, I was thinking yeah. at many points though that if this had been made by like a small little team at Naughty Dog, it would have been like the greatest game ever made. Uh, like like if we were playing like if if lost legacy was this game and like i played nadine you played chloe and it was like this sort of fun weird co-op experiment all the way through with that level of polish that naughty dog does um it would be like just amazing but instead it's sort of you know it's an indie game with high high uh, ambitions and for the most part it you know, it doesn't it doesn't fall on its face, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, I I really like it. It's one of those things yeah. which is a little bit rough around the edges, but has enough personality and uniqueness to be really memorable. Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely not going to forget about A Way Out for, for quite a while. Kind of like just how it's been with Brothers, mm-hmm. Tale of Two Souls. I think some of the action sequences in the game are, are pretty good, pretty entertaining. <laughs> yeah. I think the co-op novelties are fun, and the story was good enough to... You know, keep me going all the way to the end. See how the characters ended, mm-hmm. where their where their story arcs ended up. Uh, yeah, I'm, you're right. There's not that much to to go into, but uh, if people like story games, have got a friend to play it with. I, I give it a thumbs up. I give it a recommend. It's very smart for where we're at right now with um, games and Twitch and stuff like that. You know, I saw a lot okay, of yeah. lots of people were playing. You know, all the streamers had a friend and they were playing it, and it's it's very it's. It was. It's a, a very smart follow up to Brothers. You know, it, it you can see very clear, uh, the mindset he has with the between the two games, um, and it's a smart, uh, 2018 game where it's you know yeah, play it with someone else, uh, have some fun, have some laughs, and uh, yeah, it was good. I, it was. It's only forty bucks, thirty bucks, something like that. You only need one copy, as we said. Um, it's weird to see the EA logo on it. Um, yes. Because they basically, I think they just published it. I think, I don't think they funded it. I think it's like self-funded by the studio. Okay. But it's weird to see an EA logo on a game that is cheap, uh, different, single player only, and you only need one copy for two people. Uh, it's just very mm-hmm. <laughs> counterintuitive to what EA yeah, has been it's, doing. It's the fun last to have years. developers left that are still just trying some interesting things. Yeah. Absolutely. And I hope they keep going with their strange... I was going to say co-op novelties, because in my brain I keep f- f- falsely forgetting that uh, Brothers was a co-op game, but it wasn't. It's yeah, just like the it way a... my brain has lined up Brothers and A Way Out. But, um, it's like a single-player to... co-op game, sort of. Yeah, I don't know how to summarize what they have been doing, because I, I, A Way Out and Brothers are comparable. Yeah. I guess just two people on a screen experimenting with how that works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they're experimenting with what, like, what the traditional ideas of a game and how you control it is. How you control multiple characters. Yeah, yeah. Like normally, you just control one person, and both these games are are different interpretations of how to have two people on the screen at the same time. Yeah, that's and, what uh, I was trying to say, but in a terrible way. <laughs> but, but I, uh, I hope they keep going with that. I'd yeah. like to see them continue to experiment and bring out a unique and interesting indie game every couple of years. It's cool. Yeah, I, and I I will say I do think Brothers is better. Um, 
It's ooh, okay. Uh, I I don't I necessarily th- love con- play. I didn't necessarily love the playing aspects of Brothers. I thought the controlling two characters was sort of a little too much left left half right half brain. You know, confusing. Yeah. Like patting your head and rubbing your belly or whatever at the same time. Like, but I think. As a, a contained experience, I think the, the story and atmosphere and world of Brothers are very strong. And They're actually very close for me. I would yeah. struggle to pick one. I really like the world and some of the late game stuff in Brothers a lot. I uh, think Brothers brings the package together better. I would agree, I more, yeah. more fun with A Way Out. I would agree with that as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'd struggle they're close, to pick one. Uh, but they're both good, and they're both neat experiments. And yes. More more of that, please, from from anyone. I, I like something different every now and then. And it's, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a, an interesting and varied lineup for March, at least. An open-world, overpriced pirate game, a Ubisoft game, and a weird <laughs> co-op game. Yeah. I don't know when we will be doing another one of these because coming up in April we have uh, a, a big first party Sony game, God of War, but there also might not be much else in April, so maybe it gets a standalone review or maybe yeah. something sneaks out because mm. it's easy to lose track of like small indie games. And there is something else coming out on 420. What, what is it? Nintendo Labo. Oh... Well, that's the video settled then. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. The two biggest first party releases of the year coming out on the same day. Christ, you might even be right about that. (laughs) We'll be back in April to talk about God of War and some cardboard.